distractions. It's something you just got to use as fuel. He is the athletic director at Iowa State. Jamie Pollard also serves in the men's basketball committee. He has been a major part of the Big 12 and where they have been the last couple of years and where they are now. And Jamie Pollard, Iowa State AD, joins us on 365 Sports. Paul Craig and I'm David Smoke. Jamie, thanks for your time. We appreciate you as always. Um, your, your thoughts about the new TV deal that has not yet been officially announced. We've had Mac Rhodes on to discuss it. You on now, Gene Taylor. We've had Brett Yormark on it. Did you think they would be or you would be in this position even 18 or 24 months ago? Uh, no way. There's nobody that would uh, have anticipated we'd be in as good a spot as we're in right now. And hopefully they all said the same thing. <laughs> they yeah, did. They kind of did. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they didn't. They weren't beating around the bush. There's no question. They did. Yeah, Mac probably told you he knew, but you know he'd be blowing smoke at you. <laughs> <laughs> Some people think he does that to us on Tuesdays when he's on the show. <laughs> Jamie, uh, this is so huge for the 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 schools in the Big Twelve. One of the things the Big Twelve probably has not done over its history as well as its counterparts in say the SEC or the Big Ten is is sell the brand. Now, the SEC has a bunch of national titles that kind of sell themselves, but uh, as far as selling the brand and making people really believe that the brand of football, especially that they're going to get, uh, is good, has kind of fallen by the wayside. Will this new TV deal allow that to finally happen, and it's coming on the heels of a great football season? Well, we certainly hope so. I mean, I think one of the things that we all learned through this process is just what our real value was. And we had been led to believe without Texas and OU that we were something less than what reality ended up being. And what was really eye-opening to me is the firm that Commissioner Yormark used, Endeavor, had a gentleman named Mark Shapiro that had that up, and he used to run ESPN. And when I had seen him speak before, but never had been in a room where he was like representing us. And one of the things that he shared with us was, and it made total sense was, you know, if you're on ABC or you're on big box, your floor for what your the eyeballs watching you is at a, such a high level. And if you're on ESPN two or FSN one, you're, you're automatically going to be at a lower number. And so what was happening is when those, when ESPN and Fox were choosing Texas and OU for ABC or for the Fox game, that was artificially not only making their numbers higher, but it was artificially making our numbers lower. And so when you take them out of the equation and you get an Oklahoma State Baylor Big 12 championship game last year, all of a sudden you see our numbers are just as good. And so to me, what I, I think this is going to allow is there's going to be so many more eyeballs that are going to be on Big 12 football in the new television package that we will all benefit from that in a significant way. Jamie, how important was that uh, campus visit, do you think, for Commissioner Yormark just to go around for each school? And Because I remember talking to him at Big 12 Media Days, and here he is. He's like kind of the slick New Yorker, you know, and you're thinking of the Big 12 kind of the way that it's always been, and it's – it doesn't really seem to fit. And, you know, now he's gone around kind of seeing the lay of the land. How important do you think that was? Well, what's the old saying? Country gone to city? Yeah. You know, country gone to town? Well, it was a little different. Brooklyn came to Ames. Yeah. Um, so it was, uh, I think, very beneficial for the commissioner because I think what it did, you know, his whole background has been on the sponsorship side and big television markets. You know, the NBA, both with the Rock Nation, and for him to come see, you know, just a college campus, I think he was really surprised at the facilities that all of us have, that the extensive offerings that we provide, not just to football, but to all, you know, in our case, 450 student athletes. And I think that was really helpful for him to kind of level set, you know, what he's doing all this for. Jamie, uh, you mentioned Mark Shapiro. Today, the Big 12 came out with that business advisory board, and there are some what I call bangers, like elite alphas, including Mark Shapiro. Is that just another thing that is like opening up the eyes to the Big 12 and everyone that there is so much more out there to get and not just talk it, but get new ideas for this conference? 
Absolutely. I mean, I think it, it has several, um, you know, probably has several goals from it. But one is to tap into some of the brightest minds about, you know, as we move this conference forward, you know, if we're just going to do what has always been done, then we're probably going to get what's always been done results. And if you want to do new things and get big television contracts that no one thought you could get, then you know you you've got to think differently, and you are who you associate with, and so to have some of those you know really what I'd call um, marquee CEOs or executives can only strengthen what we all do. In fact, Garth Brooks, Jason Kidd are on this list a lot, and they're businessmen too, but also uh, many others, as I mentioned. Paul Foster, of course, people know him from Baylor uh, as well. Jamie Pollard, Director of Athletics at Iowa State with us on 365 Sports. Jamie, when you you mentioned a second ago when you were you know hearing from the TV people, like you were this with Texas and Oklahoma, you are this without them, and then you guys didn't have any way to kind of see that. Um, was that kind of a liberating feeling, or um, did you did you ever have that sneaking suspicion of that, or was it just conditioned in the members of the Big Twelve that this is who you are and this is who you always be? No, I don't think anybody at the table had that. Yeah. I think we all had a higher higher aspirations, higher vision of what we thought we were, but it just had never been confirmed by anybody. And so liberating might have been, might be the best way to describe it, that it was just nice to finally have some confirmation. You know, I, I love a, a, a saying Coach Rhodes has and or, uh, Coach Campbell has right now, that is we are going to either confirm who we are or we're going to transform who we are. And, you know, what just happened in the Big 12 is we transformed the image of what the remaining 12 schools are going to be. And we didn't confirm because confirming would have been we would have gotten 25 percent less and everyone would have said, see, I told you. And what we did is we just transformed it. And I think that's so neat. And so um, it gives just a lot of hope and I think opportunity for us to continue to build upon that. And that's where I think Commissioner Yormark is really trying to capitalize. Jamie, uh, Matt Campbell, obviously a coach that has done a great job at Iowa State, but it's been a tough year. You've had a lot of close losses, frustrating losses. Another one this past weekend. He was the hot commodity. I, I probably is still there. You have been able to, of course, have him on your team or your roster in athletic department. Where is that right now as far as him trying to get through a, a what has been kind of just a difficult season? Well, you know, we'll go to great lengths to keep him. And uh, apparently, you know, I went to great lengths here by saying, you know, could we maybe not have as good a year? <laughs> we get a year off from everybody wanting you. Um, I mean, that, now that's commitment, isn't it? Yes. Um, no, you know, we've talked about this. I mean, yes, it, you know, things haven't gone the way we'd like. But, you know, since Coach Campbell has been here, if we go back to his very first year, I remember we lost to Iowa 42-3 to in his second game as the head coach. And since that game, since that game, there's not been one game in his six years where we haven't been in the game in the fourth quarter. And this year, unfortunately, we've come up on the short end of them all. And what I'd like to say is, you know, because for a while there, we had, I think when we lost the first four games, it was by a total of 14 points. And what, and we could, so people are going, we could just as easily be seven and oh. And what I said is, yeah, but when we're seven and oh, everyone would think we were better than we are. And we're 14 points from being three and four. So, you know, there's two ways of looking at all of this. And winning is just hard. It's just hard. And we're a young team. I mean, our defense is, you know, probably the best defense we've ever had in the history of Iowa State statistically. I think we're sixth or seventh in the country right now. But unfortunately, on offense, we just haven't been able to put it together. And as a result, you know, you're in a lot of close games, but haven't gone our way. And you know, like to think that a lot of these hard knocks will pay off sometime, you know, in the future. That future may be next year. Um, but, you know, look at TCU. You know, last year, TCU, mm -hmm. you know, didn't get – no one saw this coming on TCU side of things, right? So, you know, all the bruises and hard knocks they took last year 
it's kind of all flipped around. And unfortunately, that's sport. You know, sometimes it goes your way and sometimes it's not. And right now it's not for us. You are on the uh, NCAA Men's Basketball Committee, which is a powerful committee and, of course, a massive a part of revenue when it comes to college athletics. There has been at least, at least if you read the articles or see things, that the college men's basketball tournament might expand again. Is that legitimate? Well, you know, what happened is the, the council came out with this 25%, you know, the number of schools participating, and we should try to have the tournaments all be around 25%. But that, that's cookie cutter. You know, the men's basketball tournament is, you know, it's the cowbell for the NCAA. It's where all the money comes from. It's the best thing we've got going for us as an NCAA. And, you know, to go to 96 that some people think, because that's the 25% threshold, probably isn't even on anybody's radar. It's not really a realistic number. It doesn't really work with just how things work with television. Um, could there be some expansion? There could. You could probably expand into the play-in games on the, you know, what they do in Dayton and probably add maybe four to eight more teams and not really change the tournament because those teams could then play in to play in Friday, Sunday. But it's still in its infancy. And, you know, anybody that thinks it's so far down the pike doesn't really know what's going on because it's not. We don't, you know, it's not broken, and we certainly don't want to, tinker with something that's a cash cow for the NCA. Yeah, it's like walking into the Louvre and seeing the Mona Lisa and go, she'd look good with sunglasses. Uh, <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to do that. Uh, well, <laughs> go ahead. There, I mean, and, and on top of it, you know, the Big 12, you know, we're the best basketball conference in the country, hands down. Statistically, there's no, there's no, you know, a close second there isn't. And Baylor's been a big part of that. And, you know, I take great pride in serving on this committee on be you know on behalf of the Big Twelve because both what the NCAA tournament means to the NCA and what basketball means to the Big Twelve. Jamie, we have a, a good friend Adam uh, who is a an Iowa State alum and the the biggest Iowa State fan I think I've ever met or will ever meet in my life. And he uh, asked this question: Has the Big Twelve considered a college basketball showcase on Saturdays in conference, where all the home teams each Saturday would host men's and women's doubleheaders against the same schools? So if fans wanted to travel from the opposition school or home fans spend the day and experience and take in both games, so they could do so. For example, go to Cy Cy Town there and, and between games and have lunch and shop and, and experience that in Ames or wherever they might be? Well, I mean, flat out, the answer is no, I haven't heard that idea come up before. Mm -hmm. um, not saying it's not a good idea. You know, just off the top of my head, one of the challenges is television feeds the beast mm -hmm. that we all call college athletics. And so trying to do what he just said there's probably not enough TV windows to fit all those games in exactly like he said, you know, and so that one makes something like that probably a little more challenging than what might feel like if you're just writing it out on the back of a napkin, you got to fill all those television windows and continue to help, you know, our partners that pay a lot of money to make our league be as broadcasted as it is, you know, and I, I don't know if you could pull that off. Now I will say this, you know, as an NCAA tournament committee member, the challenge we do at the SEC is the challenge that's probably the most respected and the most appreciated by the men's basketball committee. And it's simply because when we play it on that Saturday, you know, in late January, early February, when there you already kind of have a sense of what are the good teams in each league. And so you get some great marquee matchups where you get to compare good teams from the SEC against the Big 12 team which is vastly different than the challenge games we do in December when nobody really knows yet what you have. Jamie, on the, you look inside the Big 12, you and where your role is. Gene Taylor's on the uh, college football committee. Mac is on some committees. Uh, obviously, Dr. Livingstone very much in the transformational committee. Um, e. Gordon Gee has been in these committees. Do you feel like that a lot of you have – not more respect because people respect you, but even more of a say, does it get larger now that the conference changes without Texas and OU in the future? 
Well, that's a great question. And, you know, only time will know, will tell that. Right. But, you know, what I do know is this, we have some really hardworking or I have some hardworking colleagues, whether they're presidents, whether they're ADs, um, whether they're our senior women's administrators, our coaches, our faculty athletic reps that really care about the Big 12. And several of us have been through, you know, some really tough peaks and valleys over the years of, you know, is this league going to stay together? And, you know, that's to me as, as the, the probably, I, I guess I'm the dean of the sustaining ADs, that it matters to me. You know, because my professional career as an athletics director has been tied to this league and it really, it matters to me that our league gets the respect I know it deserves because we represent a lot of really talented student athletes and fan bases that are very rabid about sports. You know, and that's one of the neat things I love about the Big 12 is you know, you're not going to find empty stadiums and empty arenas when you go on the road. And that, I think, is also what makes this league really special and gets us some clout at the national level. How good is the Big 12 Men's Basketball Conference, and how much better will it get, actually, when you have others like Houston, Cincinnati? UCF, of course, is trying to get to a level, and, of course, Brigham Young has a beautiful arena. How strong is that about to be, if not already? Oh, my. I mean, it. Um, both men and women. But it, it, it is, uh, you know, you look and go, how can it get any tougher? It's going to get tougher, you know. And so, but that, that's what makes it, makes it what it is. You know, when I think of the Big 12 tournament, you know, in Kansas City, I've said to our folks, because I know, you know, I know the, the Southern schools maybe go, oh, it becomes a home game for KU or Iowa State or K-State. But you watch the BYU, they will help fill that arena. I mean, the, the BYU folks are rabid about their programs. And so, yeah, this league is going to be, it's going to be a tough out. I mean, can't imagine having to go on the road to Cincinnati or to Houston or to BYU or to Central Florida on top of having to go to Baylor and, you know, to KU and K-State. So, um, yeah, but that's, hey, that's what we do it for. Jamie, I had somebody on the chat room. We have a chat room going on. Uh, you don't have a baseball program. Is that something that is just not going to change, or is that ever going to be something in the future that you look at? Well, no, I'm a baseball junkie. I'm a huge Milwaukee Brewers fan, but I don't see it happening. Mm -hmm. you know, in this day and age, you know, we're having a hard enough time figuring out how we're going to feed the mouths we already have to feed. And right. to add another sport is just pretty daunting. Secondly, for us as a northern school, you know, adding baseball where, quite frankly, most of our my colleagues have quasi minor league ballparks and state, you know, stadiums and programs makes it really tough to compete when you're in the north. And not to say you can't, but when all the schools you're going to compete with in your league are pretty much playing in a different sandbox, that makes it tough. Yeah, that that's a, that's a great answer as well. I, I'd say the Southern schools need to add wrestling. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's a great hey, response. It's, it's inside. You You're never wrestling outside in the snow. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, hey, I tell you what, as rabid as your fans are for baseball, you come when we wrestle Iowa or we wrestle Oki State. You come up to Ames, Iowa, and I guarantee you, you'll have a wild time. <laughs> One of my favorite experiences is I went actually with the Baylor Charter to a basketball game in Ames at Hilton Coliseum, and I was blown away by the atmosphere. It was phenomenal. My last question, we'd ask you this, if you don't mind, you shared your story about your health and battling cancer. How are you doing? You know what? I'm coming up on a year here, so I have my next uh, scan in December. It was Thanksgiving a year ago that uh, I had the surgery, so hopefully – you know, my first two scans, the first two three-month scans were all good, so I feel good. So hopefully uh, December will be, you know, just a layup. And um, and if that's the case, then, you know, I'm a year into it, and that's, that's a good benchmark to get to. So Appreciate that, the inspiration, Jamie. Thanks for your time as far as your leadership, Iowa State Athletic Director. Again, Jamie Pollard, we appreciate your time. All right, guys. Thank you for having me on. You're more than welcome. Jamie Pollard with us on 365 Sports.